Hey, it's John Siskovich, and I wanted to shoot a video on when you tell it's time to put your broilers out on pasture. So these are Cornish Cross. I raise both Cornish Cross and Red Rangers here on farm, uh, and I'm in one of my brooder sheds. And I have this guy with me as an example. Uh, these are males, they're about two weeks old. I do two weeks in the brooder and six weeks in the field. Now there's a couple factors that play into that. It's not an exact science for me. Uh, weather is a big factor. If it's gonna rain or if it's gonna be a terrible day, spending a couple extra days in the brooder is not a bad thing. It'll save you from your birds getting wet, cold, and dying on you. Uh, but there is that fine line of if they get too big in the brooder, they're getting too wet, they're pooping a lot and creating a lot of ammonia, then they're getting sick and it's weakening them for later in life and you start in, to run into things like coccidiosis. So this guy, about two weeks, you can see he's about the size of a baseball. I want to show you here. We've got a whole bunch of primary flight feathers. And, you know, Cornish cross never feather out that well in the middle of the summer. Right now it's the beginning of June. Um, you're going to cooperate with me? <clears throat> and uh, I never feather out real crazy in the brooder. They'll still be a little bit fuzzy. What you wanna do is from when you begin brooding them to when they go out in the field, you're gradually stepping down their heat. So you're starting around 94, 95 degrees, and then gradually stepping down so that the last several days in the brooder, they're as the environment inside is exactly like the environment outside. They're just safe and at home, but they are starting to harden off. It was 42 degrees last night. I had no heat in here. I had windows open. It was you know, safe and secure but it was like the temperature outside so that when they spend the night outside tonight and going forward it's not a big shock to their system you don't want to give them lights up until they go uh, because then they won't be used to it i'm going to put him down so i can finish this video without a uh, distracting little monster in my hands so one of the things you'll notice next to me is this pile of shavings uh, they're bales of pine shavings that i use and my brooders and I overbuy for what I'm going to use. They never go bad. I do a lot of rotations of chicks during the year. You never have too many shavings on hand. I especially want a lot on hand when they're getting big and I want to move them outside because you don't want that ammonia to build up. You want to keep their brooding situation dry, clean, little manure as possible. Shovel out any wet cakes, you know, around the feeders or waterers. We move our feeders around in the brooder to more evenly spread the manure out instead of feeding in the same place and not doing anything day after day because they'll sit and eat and poop and sit and eat and poop and that will build up. They'll breathe that in because they're sitting right on the shavings and that will give them lung diseases and weaken their immune system. All in all, not a very positive way for them to live. So we're doing almost daily fresh shavings, even if it's not a full bale, a sprinkling on top to keep things dry, keep that manure packed down. We also keep a wheel, wheelbarrow outside of the shed that we'll shovel out manure cakes into the wheelbarrow and then bring it out to the compost later on. <clears throat> the real trick is keep them dry, keep them clean, and then as they're going out to field, make the environment inside the brooder as much like outside as you could possibly get so that there's no shock, no big shock to their system when they're moving from inside to outside. Uh, there are different ways that I'm sure people brood everywhere. I brood with the lights right there. Uh, I give them the hanging bucket with the nipples on it. I also give them a the bell water, a variety of things. So they're always getting feed, they're always getting water. They're always clean and dry and happy and healthy. That little extra time and effort you spend in the brooder pays off in a lower mortality rate later on. Ask me how I know. So that's it for this video. That's when I bring my birds out to pasture. My rule of thumb, two weeks in the brooder, six weeks in the field for a Cornish cross, two weeks, two and a half weeks in the brooder, and up to eight weeks in the field, seven, eight weeks in the field for the Red Rangers because they're a little bit more slow growing, but a hardier bird, so yeah. If you take away nothing else from this video, the key to everything on farm is observation. Not running through your tasks, you have a lot to do. I'm always stressed out. Uh, these days and there's a lot on my plate but taking some time to sit and watch your birds watch what's going on observe really pays off because you'll notice oh they can't reach the feeder they can't reach the water or when they pick that water a lot of water falls out little things that you'll notice that you'll pick up on you'll adjust your system and you'll get more efficient and you'll have a lower mortality rate year to year 
Uh, the only reason I consider myself an expert, which I don't really consider myself an expert, but it's because I've killed more chickens than most other people. And you, if you're good, you only make those mistakes once. You will make those mistakes, but you only make them once, you learn from it, you adjust your system. And my year to year, my mortality rate is getting lower, which means my farm profits are going up. That's it. Hope you uh, enjoy your day. I'm gonna get back to work, get these ones out on the pasture. They're going out right now after I finish this video. I'm really happy about that. So until next time, I'll see you out in the field.